Today I want to talk to you about six questions in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, about a very unusual and strange passage. Matthew chapter 27 covers the events when Jesus is crucified. Some of these events include after Jesus gave up his breath, that is, he died, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. There was an earthquake, rocks split open, and then it says tombs were opened. And then we come to this very strange section of scripture where it says, after the tombs were open, after Jesus was resurrected, saints came out of the tombs, went into the holy city, that is the city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many. So as we look at this scripture, as we ponder what in the world is going on, some of the questions come up for us are this. Number one, is this something Matthew actually wrote? Number two, where in the world did Matthew get this information? Question number three, why did God do something like this? Question number four, who were these people? Question number five, what happened to these people? Are they still alive? Question number six, what does this have to do with us? How is it any comfort or what does it teach us? Question number one, did Matthew really write this? Well, here's the situation. We have no manuscripts without this verse. We cannot say that some scribe added this verse to the Gospel of Matthew. So by all accounts, yes, Matthew wrote this verse. Question number two, where did Matthew get this information? For this, we can only make assumptions. We assume that the people that were raised from the dead, that spoke to their friends, to their families, to their relatives, came and spoke to Matthew as well. Matthew got this information from people who had actually seen the dead come back to life. It's very interesting to see the people that will complain that this verse doesn't make sense, that God could not have done this. These are the same people, oftentimes, that believe that God created the universe out of nothing, ex nihilo, as we say. These are the same people that might not say, have any difficulty with the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. But this verse causes them a lot of problems. It's kind of crazy, really. If Jesus is God, then this is no big deal for him to accomplish. Question number three, why did God do this? Now, anytime you get into the motivation of why God did something, you are entering into dangerous territory. God doesn't specifically say why this miracle took place. So we can do some speculation. One possible reason that God did this is to simply provide additional evidence to show that Jesus didn't pass out on the cross, to show that this was a true resurrection from the dead. The testimony of these people also show that this was a true work of God. This wasn't just one resurrection that took place. It wasn't only Jesus that rose from the dead, but it was their own friends and family members people they knew firsthand. It's one thing to believe a good person or a good friend who tells you about a miraculous event. It's another thing to see your dead father or your dead mother or your dead brother or sister come back to life and tell you that yes, Jesus is the Messiah and he is the first fruits of those who have risen from the dead. Question number four, who were these people? Well, the Bible says that they were saints, and the word saints has been used since the earliest times of the Christian faith to describe Christians, the Christian community. These were not saints in the same way that the Catholic Church talks about them. All Christians are saints. Most likely, these were people who had believed in Jesus while he was alive, before the crucifixion, but had died before the resurrection. Three possibilities that we could include in this. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. John the Baptist himself. 
And of course, Joseph, the husband of Mary, the adopted father of Jesus. Prior to the resurrection, there was a different state for the people who died. The Old Testament says that everybody went to Sheol. Now there was a difference between the righteous and the wicked as to what happened in Sheol. But the essence of it is, is that there was a difference after the resurrection. Now, after the resurrection, you would go and enter into the presence of Christ, not just await the resurrection in Sheol. 1 Peter 4, 6 tells us that the gospel was preached to the dead. And this may well be a reference as to what Peter was talking about. The disciples looked at the resurrection not as simply an isolated event, although it was of extreme importance, but also as the first fruits of the resurrection, a promise that one day we will all have resurrected bodies. Question number five, what happened to these people after they were raised from the dead? Are they still alive today? No, I believe that the Bible teaches that they went ahead and ascended into heaven when Jesus went to heaven after 40 days then also these souls these saints also went up to heaven with him finally question six what does this have to do with us today what meaning does it have for us today well it's simply this whenever we go to a funeral whenever we see the death of our loved ones we don't mourn like the pagans do. We don't have to believe that death is the end of everything, that there is no more existence. We have hope, we have faith, we have trust that just as Jesus has risen from the dead and these early T New Testament saints rose from the dead on the day of resurrection, we also can look forward to our resurrection to the resurrection of our parents and brothers and sisters and children, no matter what the condition. And this is also a reflection that we have to have as well. Some will be resurrected to life, and some will be resurrected to judgment. And it all depends on whether or not we have faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for bearing with me as we go through a very difficult passage in the New Testament. I hope if you've liked this video that you might share it, that you might subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. It encourages me to try and make more content. Thank you so much and God bless you. This is Pastor John signing off.